Ukraine today is joined by a Georgian violinist who currently lives and works in Germany, Ms. Lisa Batyashvili. Ms. Batyashvili, welcome to Ukraine today. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Batyashvili, shall we take a little walk and um, I'll ask you a couple of questions um, on our way. Um, you're playing at Ukraine's Independence Day ceremony, celebrations of Ukraine's independence together with the iCulture Orchestra. How special is this performance for you? It is very, very special for all of us, for the musicians, for the people in Ukraine, for me particularly. Uh, my country, Georgia, has also an Independence Day on the 26th of May, so I know exactly what kind of important day it is for all the former republics of Soviet Union. It is, in a way, in these days, also a symbolic day for the future, because it's not where we are stopping, but we're going further. And, of course, it's a great honor for me to be part of this very special kind of concert because I hear this is the first time that an, an orchestra like this performs on the Independence Day on Maidan after everything that happened last year. So I think we will all have a lot of emotions tomorrow. I understood. Um, Ms. Bajashvili, you are a great supporter of, of Ukraine in light of the Russian aggression which is happening right now. And in one of your interviews, you said that you understand how Ukrainians feel because this is the same what Georgians were going through back in 2008. But had there not been Russian aggression in Georgia back in 2008, do you think you would be supporting Ukraine right now? The way you're supporting mm, it now? Very likely. But of course, if you experience it in your own skin, it's a different thing. I, I live in Germany. During the 2008 war, I was actually expecting my second child. And I remember that very, very painful moment um, where I was watching on television when my country, my small country, was just uh, basically attacked. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, nobody knew how this would end. So I feel, um, of course, um, a lot of kind of solidarity uh, and pain for the people in Ukraine whose situation that is not getting better and is kind of this conflict is going on and on and on which is of course very difficult to to digest because um, you know Ukraine should have use its time and energy to build a country and to make it as stable as possible which is it's absolutely impossible in the, in the wartime so I think that it's um, it's Everybody's own decision, but it's also in some ways our duty to stand up for something that we believe, uh, especially if we feel that it is something very natural for us. And for me, it is a natural choice. Ms. Batasvili, one of your most famous acts of protest was uh, during your concert, last year during your concert in Rotterdam Philharmonic with Rotterdam Philharmonic Orchestra, uh, which was led by Valery Gergiev who has very close ties to President Putin and who endorsed Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea. Then, uh, during this concert, after your concerto, you, you stood up and you played a piece called Requiem for Ukraine. Can you tell us what motivated you to do that? Um, that was in the middle of the, of the most difficult conflict time, of course, last year. And, uh, I had to remember also what happened in Ossetia, the concert that happened there with Mr. Gegev and his orchestra. And I thought that it was the right moment to also just um, say my opinion with the music and express my opinion. At the same time, it was really for the people, for the simple people who actually, and this is the reason why it was called Requiem uh, for Ukraine, because it was dedicated to the people who are the ones that suffer most. And these are the simple people in Eastern Ukraine, also people who actually just can't find the peace. And I wanted to draw a little bit more attention to that in general for the Western audience, because there is a certain kind of hesitation generally in some countries where people don't want to get too much involved with this um, conflict. And um, I think that it is if, there is a clear support from one side, there should be also a clear opinion from the other side and just explain why we're doing that. Also in one of your interviews, you said that culture has a great power. And a lot of musicians, including yourself, have now declined any offers to perform in Russia or not performing in Russia, but yet this doesn't seem to stop Vladimir Putin. 
So do you think that culture indeed has enough power to stop Kremlin, to stop Russia's aggression here in Ukraine? No, I don't think that. Uh, but um, culture is uh, a face of a country. Uh, because we musicians are um, the ones who travel and we share our um, musical experiences with the audience throughout the world. Um, this is such an incredible situation with that and, and uh, opportunities that we have. So I think we are also the people who can take an advantage of the freedom that we have as artists to just speak out without having to stick to a certain political uh, side. Uh, and I think that uh, it's very important that we, as I said before, we really say and we do what we believe in. And uh, of course we cannot influence political situation. Many politicians cannot influence the political situation because this is all very, very complex and uh, but I think that we can eventually influence some part of the society. I understood. Ms. Batishvili, we're now walking on the street where one year and a half ago, during Euromaidan protest, most of the protesters were killed. You can see the, 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 the pictures, the, uh, the, the candles of those protesters who were killed in the fight for their freedom, for their independence. And I understand this is the, your first time here in Ukraine after the Euromaidan happened. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about being here mm. in the epicenter where everything happened? Mm. And also at the same time at this very tragic location. It is very moving because when I look at this, um, all these pictures of young people who were fighting here for not only for freedom, but they were fighting here for a better life for fair life, for opportunities to grow, uh, and they were killed for that. Um, so this is for me unacceptable. Uh, but I also actually feel a lot of peace here because I, I spent a couple of hours yesterday on my down already, and I couldn't believe what happened here because it just felt so peaceful. And it is probably connected to, to the Ukrainian people who are very peaceful. And I see them very peaceful. At the moment, I see them also as someone, as people who are hurt, who are being hurt, and who actually wish nothing more than just peaceful life and, and just time to, you know, just get the rest from everything that happened. Ukraine is now going through a lot of reforms. Mm. Uh, obviously, after U the Euromaidan revolution, the country is trying to change. The people have changed. Now the country is trying to change. Mm -hmm. And the um, Ukrainian government has invited um, a lot of uh, uh, Georgian officials to help Ukraine mm. go through this change. How do you feel about your compatriots, about uh, the people from your country n now helping Ukraine to change and to, 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 to evolve? Well, I do trust them because uh, I think these people were the ones who also changed Georgia uh, very progressively and um, in an incredibly contemporary way. I think this is what also Ukraine needs today. And it is, it is very difficult because the system that Ukraine and also other countries have been living with was uh, something very strong as well. And it's a little bit difficult to get out from this. And I'm sure that every person that can give aid and ideas and help to this country to actually make this really difficult but important steps will be very welcomed. And I think Georgia uh, proved that it is possible. And I said, well, Ms. Batishvili, let's hope that this will indeed uh, help Ukraine. Uh, many thanks for finding the time in your very busy schedule to, to talk to us. Thank you. This was Vladimir Sulhu for Ukraine Today, together with the Georgian violinist, Ms. Lisa Batishvili. Thank you for watching us.